Okay, welcome back to the Zero K Triple Threat Tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, and we are back with, as far as I know, the actual results. So it's a little bit wonky because of the fact that basically there, like, there was some issues with the way the teams were sorted out, but everything's been sorted now. So the only wonky thing is that DoD and Drone were essentially given a tie because they each kind of won their own game because they were waiting on teams that never showed up. They basically both got buys. But now we're into round two, and we're going to be starting out with the match between GBC and Drone. And it's going to be apparently an I4. I don't know how this map pool stuff is working anymore. It's supposed to be a winner contest maps, but Shaman decided not to show up, so we're just doing whatever. So let's go! Alright, so... Oh, yeah, people are wondering. So, it this is not hard for me. People are wondering, like, oh man, it's so hard because it's like nine in the morning on a Saturday. It's like, nah, you you kidding? I get up at six and, or seven on a regular basis. But I also used to get up for these tournaments at like one in the morning because it used to be that they were start at like 10 a.m. in UTC, the 10 a.m. in Western Europe, so like noon in Eastern Europe. It was very European centric. And then there was a shift over where it was very North American centric. It started at like 10 in the morning, North American time, or actually noon sometimes North American. But now it's... I think that was basically just North America. And now this one is starting at 4 p.m. UTC, so 8 a.m. for me. A bit annoying for anyone in Australia. They're kind of not really... In, have. They're kind of done. Like, there's nothing you can really do with that. They're going to be starting at midnight. But for North Americans, it's actually really perfect because, hey, I can get up, cast a tournament, have the rest of the day. doesn't get in the way of my day, which is nice. And for the European player as well, okay, I guess it's a little bit really awkwardly early because it crosses through dinner. But then again, I don't know. Maybe they eat dinner really late. But anyway, yeah, this is going to be GBC versus Team Drone or Team FX. I guess... I mean, two of them are members of, of the FX clan, so I'm just going to go with that. And it's going to be on Eye of Horus, a map which I kind of haven't seen in a while, but I'm... Curious how it works in 3v3. I haven't seen it in 3v3 in a long time. Normally, you see this in 1v1, and it works quite well for that. But anyway, Malric going for rovers, drone going for tanks, and rovers also for jazz cash. North side of the map, we actually aren't seeing the north side. GBC take the, the northwest base. Wesley and Hokomoko both starting out in the center. Hokomoko going for air, which kind of makes sense if Wesley's covering them on Cloaky. And Anarchy going for tanks. Sorry, go for rovers, my bad. Going for rovers. They should be able to. I mean, defend it reasonably well. I mean, it looks like Anarchy already trying to focus and make sure they don't get assaulted over to the left, over to the right. But on the left side of the map, west side of the map, we do have Wesley having to deal with the fact that this is very open and they're the ones protecting it. And I'm not sure if it's going to be su super obvious. The one thing here is that there aren't any units on the south side of the team, on the team drone or whatever, that can actually cross the hills. Oh. Okay, we have a bit of a technical problem with disconnection. Probably have to get that back in. Well, waiting a couple seconds. Anyway, continuing along, the south side team drone does not have any units that can actually cross the hill, so there's no easy way for them to go around here and see, oh, hey, by the way, there's an air factory. They'll probably realize that if they manage to get into the northwest base and see that there's nothing there, because why else would there be only two of the sides, like two of the three opening sections being taken? Unless someone was going, trying to go for air and hiding behind somebody else. So yeah, at this point, Team Drone has a massive economic advantage going forward, unless Team unless the GBC is able to very rapidly expand over to the northwest, which they might be able to. But it's really the question of are they going to be able to do that? How is that going to work? Because right now, GBC does not really have the best position to be doing this in. They like they they can send in some workers over the hills as this conjurer is kind of prepping to go. But they also can't easily defend it. That's the thing. Unless the Contra starts building up Stardust or Lotuses, I suppose. That's not really going to be able to do a thing. And these Glaze coming in one at a time, not able to get rid of the Scorcher. So, really, right now, this is very tricky. At the same time, though, we do have Anarchid coming in here over to the south side. Just trying to scout out. Not really damaging too much. Or managing to find too much damage. But just trying to scout things. Just trying to see what exactly is going on here. What have people built? What do they have to deal with? And I didn't see them actually see Malric's base. I'm guessing they... Oops. Wrong side. 
Oh, they did. Okay, so they have enough knowledge that Malric is going for rovers. So yeah, the, the south side is completely exposed on the north side. The north side, I don't think they actually know. Or rather, I don't think they've been exposed on the air front. I mean, okay, it has been exposed in the fact that the, the Swifts have come out and started doing stuff. But the actual position of the factory is not known. However, yeah, the fact that air is a thing that has been known. We are seeing ogres come out, which probably more to deal with the glaze than anything else. And fences as well. So some flex AA being built up by Team Drone, but not too much beyond that. Which, again, does not surprise me. I mean, Team Drone's going to be going for more of a ground force just because they can. I mean, yeah, a bit of air is a bit of a threat, but you got the ogres, got the fencers. You can deal with light air, like swifts and such. And Thunderbird coming in here, trying to stun out the Kodachi coming up from Team Drone, but most is hanging out its own base. Still managed to disarm the Kodachi, still managed to get rid of the Kodachi without losing much more than the metal extractor. But again, GBC does have an economic disadvantage just because of the way they tr decided to start this game. They started out with this two-thirds build. And yeah, they're taking the center a little bit faster than the South team, than Team Drone. But the fact is, they there's a lot of safe metal extractors that they have not taken, which Team Drone has taken. And that's really where things are turning around here. I mean, as long as GBC can maintain a reasonably strong defensive position as they build up this economy, they'll be fine. But as we can already see, there's a bunch of units coming around the back. I mean, this... Scorcher right here coming in from Malric. This, there's nothing contesting that. And at the same time, I mean, there's some... A bit of... Uh, uh, okay, not really a fight. More of a destruction of a Stardust. But at least a bit of a roadblock for the forces coming in over the eastern side of the map. But mainly, the western side of the map just has the Scorcher that can wipe out anything. Like, this western expansion cannot really be built to by GBC because they simply don't have any units there to get rid of the Scorcher. So... It's a little bit tricky. It's not a huge economic advantage, all things considered, but it is still an economic advantage. And short of actually finding some way of making that turn into a mil... Well, I guess... Short of finding some way of making that economic disadvantage not be a major deal for now, like using attrition to make up for it, the Thunderbirds especially. That's exactly what's being attempted right here. Thunderbirds coming in, disarming all of these Scorch... All these Fencers. That should get rid of it. The Scorch is coming in around the back. They're being threatened by the Lotus, but at least they're able to get rid of the Fencers. And that is the one thing we do see that GBC has going for them, is they do have a, the Air Factory. And with that Thunderbird, so the Force Multiplier element of that is still going to be extremely effective. Malik's Commander not really threatened right now. I mean, they're obviously under some threat. But the main problem, of course, is the fact that all these Fencers went down for relatively little cost. So nicely done there. It also exposes where the Commander is, and that's exactly what these Bombers are trying to help deal with. Well, okay, first off the Ogre, because they can. But again, this is what I mentioned before. The Ogre is Flex AA that has to be handled carefully. Mostly it's a riot unit, of course, but Flex AA is still a thing. <gasps> oh, is that going to go down? No, it's not going to go down. Not going to go down in time. Nah, even with the slow, it's, the reload time was not low enough. The dart could not kill it. That was about as well micro as it could have been, but nah, just not well enough. It's kind of like that. And... Okay, so... This, all right, I'll get back to that. There's some Twitch chats that I'll get to it once this is over. But first off, another Thunderbird coming in here does disarm the base again, but again, opens things up for defenses, getting rid of the Ogre on top of that. I mean, this is the one thing that's been going for GBC right now is that Thunderbird has saved their butt so many times. But it's really starting to run out just because right now Team Drone has most of this entire game. Like, they have most of the map just on them. It's really, that's all there is. Oh, to answer the question here, two minutes. There is a two-minute delay between my cast and someone watching the game. I found that to be a reasonably long enough to avoid cheating, but short enough to make sure that people are still engaged delay. I don't know, maybe it's too short. Like, I could go longer, I don't really want to go shorter. Anyway, at this point, GBC, again, they are fighting pretty hard here. They do have some reclaim coming in that's actually going to be some use. I mean, on their side of the map, got about a thousand-ish metal reclaim, so there's stuff. But again, the problem is that they've only just now managed to build up this northwest side of the map, so they've only just now managed to get themselves set up in such a way that they can actually get the economy truly going. And again, they don't have half the map, so reclaim is going to be the only thing keeping GBC truly in this game. Or getting a bunch of overdrive, and at this point, south side, they already have They've got plenty of power. They got 128 energy. Their overdrive isn't huge, but again, they've got enough metal extractors that even with that, the overdrive is still coming up to like 6 to 12 metal per second. 
Like, GBC needs 40 per second just to break even. Or an extra 40 per second just to break even. So I'm not really seeing a whole lot of options here. GBC has managed to at least start holding off the center. But again, it's just a matter of how well these Thunderbirds manage to work out. Because that is the biggest threat. The Thunderbirds coming in here and disabling all the units from Team Drone. That ends... Or disarming, rather, all the units from Team Drone. That is what has been giving the GBC whatever advantage they've... Or not even advantage. That's been keeping GBC in the game. That's been giving GBC the survival they need. Let alone winning. They don't even have an advantage. They're just staying alive. They're treading water right now. The Thunderbird comes in every once in a while and does help push that. And then things like these Scalpels coming in as well. The Scalpels shouldn't be able to actually kill the Commander. It's... It's trying. But not... No, it's not good enough. Bit of a shame, though. It looks like four sides came in. And not enough damage dealt with the Commander. The Commander having 2800 HP, a lot of it just came down to the fact that the Stingers was... The Stinger was right there and there was two Lotuses on top of that. Two or three more might have done it, but it doesn't look like GBC even wants to continue this game. GBC looks to be done. West at least looks to be done. And I can't say I blame them. I do think there is a bit of a chance that they nicely Thunderbird this entire army here. Like, Jazz Cash could lose their entire front line if they get Thunderbird. Because there's not much behind it supporting. There's some defenses here and there. But at the same time, there's a lot of Crashers here. Actually, no, there's only two Crashers. No, never mind. What am I saying? A Thunderbird could totally come in here. And indeed it is. The Thunderbird gets in here. Ah, oh, there's no Glaive Zone. A lot of the forces are being destroyed. The Glaives would be the best thing to use right now. But Thunderbird coming in, disarming about half the forces. That's not quite enough to really make it open. Doesn't quite lead to a follow-up, I'm afraid. I mean, it almost leads to a follow-up, but it's just not quite enough. Like, another Thunderbird on the other side could help. And it does at least allow for a bit of a push. But, nah. South side, if they needed to... They, or rather, GBC needed to have destroyed this entire army. Like, Thunderbird the entire thing from the side, and then come in with everything else. But that's not going to happen. Wesley losing their commander and most of their army. Pokemon Pokemoko managing to build up a little bit in the way of defenses, but... I mean, mainly it's just these two boys and the Grizzly coming in. Which might be too little too late. At the same time, we do have Wesley going a little more to the center. Trying to deal with this, but the Ogre coming in here could be a problem. And by could, I mean very well likely will. If not the Ogre, then the Cyclops, most certainly. But I don't know what really they have to do. I mean, if they had irises, I could see that working out okay. Again, irises, very strong. Definitely worth using. I could see that working. But again, not really. And now, of course, all the crashes have come in. So at this point, six crashers. No, the Thunderbirds are not going to be able to get in and actually do anything anymore. So with that, there isn't really a huge amount of options for GBC. Actually, as it is, we already see Wesley just resigned. Giving all the units to Anarchid. But I think at this point, it's going to be... It's going to be uh, the Dominatrix coming in from Wesley. Sorry, yeah, from Wesley. No, sorry, Wesley. From Anarchid. Ah, what am I saying? Anarchid with the Dominatrix trying to do what they can, but it's not enough. They realize, no, Drone has most of the map. Our Team Drone, rather, has most of the map. That is going to be it. And if you look at the economy, it's... I mean, this Team Drone had the economic advantage from the majority of the game. Actually, the entire game. Really, it's more just that GBC managed to keep themselves alive remarkably well, despite being at a disadvantage for so much of the game. But even then, it was more just a matter of, you know, when it came up. Ultimately, the game was just progressing towards a win to Team Drone, just because of the fact that GBC started out with such a risky start. So, the thing is, the risky start here, it didn't really pay off. Like, it's kind of the Thunderbirds being used a little bit as a force multiplier, or maybe throw in a bunch of Ravens. Like, I can see... Like, early four or five Ravens go in, wipe out a commander before anything gets spotted. Yeah, that would make sense. But on a map like this, where there's three obvious starting points, and you you just sacrifice one of them in a gambit to get air early, I don't know, you gotta make that pay off. And that's something you have to make work without actually, well, losing everything in the process. Alright, so the next match, I'm curious what is up right now, because I think... I think that's it, actually. That was the last match. All the rest of them have been played out. Spark Commander beating DoD, Fire Team Fireblock beating Team Astron, Cosmo beating Dyke made us do this. And Team Drone, of course, being GBC. So now I'm going to go look at two teams I have not seen yet. DoD and Astron. That is going to be the next round, round three. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up once it gets going, because I like to break this up with little breaks. Makes it easier to edit afterwards.